Hi everyone, welcome to the 100% walkthrough of Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD with me, Austin John Plays, of the YouTube channel Austin John Plays. I didn't want you to leave the title screen, I was doing an intro. Hi! This is going to be a series where I'm going to be going through the entire playthrough of the game, mostly focusing on having all the progression possible up until most of the uh, dungeons and temples and everything else that you're going to be experiencing in the game. In addition, I am going to be having compilations toward the end of this playlist that's going to include things like all the heart containers, goddess stones, so even if you miss something along the way, you'll be fairly caught up. This video in particular, we're mostly just going to be going through the beginning of the game. It's going to be a much shorter video than starting our next video. We're going to get into the real wall through and go about how you get your items and the best way to go about them and exactly what items we're starting every episode with and what items we're ending episode with so as I said there's a playlist down below that's definitely gonna be your friend check that out in this video in particular we're not gonna be getting any heart pieces cubes or chests or gratitude crystals or medals or increases to heart instead we're getting a bottle and a shield and we're going through the tutorial and you're getting to know my voice if you've already done those things and you've already jumped off of Skyloft, just head to the next episode already. If you're not familiar, you're going to be hitting this Y button a lot. That's going to be resetting your gyro a lot. And also, if you look in the options, you are going to have your options for control mode, for button only, or if you want to go to motion controls, you can change this anytime that you want. So don't feel like you're locked into one if you want to explore motion controls or not. Also, as far as Amiibo, you have to unlock that later in the game, which is fine. So for now, we are just going to be starting our adventure. Something that I don't understand you can only put in eight letters. That's what it was in the Wii title, and how come they didn't change that since then? It's just, that's it. Austin J. A-OK. -okay. <laughs> When you start up your game, if you chose to watch the intro animations or to just skip through them, which is completely up to you, you're going to be woken up to Burb. This is Blue Burb. He spit letter at you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I really do love that. One of the, the best parts about this game is just, just how much character they give Link and Zelda. Also, now you can hit the B button and you go through text so much faster. So if you want to read the text and enjoy this game, go for it. Starting off, we do need to actually grind a little bit of rupees. That way we can make sure that we have enough to buy some stuff early in the game. And oh man. This is my first time experiencing a Zelda game at 60 FPS on a home console, and I have to say, this is just magical. Not gonna lie, Skyloft looks a little dated, like it was from a game 10 years ago, or from a Pokemon game made two years ago. Starting off, you have to do much less tutorial to actually start up the game. Oh wow. I tell you, that's such a game changer when you could just jump through that text there. He doesn't cut you off all the time. This is so nice. Hornwell talks about uh, helping out and getting this animal on top of the roof, but I don't think you actually have to do it. So like, if you're familiar that uh, on how to like climb and do stuff in this game, you don't need to worry about that. So I'm just gonna skip all that, which is so nice to do. That guy, you don't need to talk to him. We learned about a stamina fruit, which replaces replenishes your stamina gauge. Isn't that just so nice? There's actually kind of like one specific route throughout all of Skyloft that lets you just run with stamina fruits. So now you're back in control of Link and you need, to, you need to find what happened to your burb. And I have good news for you. I know where your burb is. You need to head to the plaza, which is right in the center of town near uh, one of the little jump off areas. Also, uh, feel free to hop into that tree and it scares out a bug and five rupees. The five rupees is really why we did it, not so much the bug. Anyways, here's the plaza, and you're gonna see some characters over here. Let's head on over, they look super friendly. And you're gonna be introduced to one of the most magical characters, Groose. Honestly, out of like, he's an NPC, you don't really have like quests for him or anything, but he's definitely by far one of the most memorable Zelda characters of all time. Goose is going to be going on and on about how he wants some alone time with Zelda, winky face emoji. And oh wow, the textures on his face. You know what? They might have looked better in 480p. Nice hair. From here, we actually still need to find out what happened to our burb. Ah, oh, I didn't make it. From here, we still need to find out what actually happened to our burb. We're gonna head our way back to the academy, this little underpath, and we're gonna be following it all the way around. And you're gonna see these yellow, little yellow bubbles that look all adorable and hand-drawn. Whenever you see the yellow, that usually means that there's some sort of uh, progress or update with that person and you want to speak with them. And now Pippet is gonna tell you that over here, this super weakling, little little wussy looking guy named Fledge, he knows where your bird is. He's underneath the waterfall and you have to go save him. 
It's okay, I make fun of Fledge now, but we're gonna help him out later and he's gonna become all big and strong. And look, that's where we have to go. It's the waterfall. But before you can head to the waterfall, you need to get yourself a weapon. And in order to do that, we're gonna head inside of the sparring hall. We're gonna head right to the back room. And right here, boom, first weapon in the game. We got a sword. In the original game, you had to do a whole bunch of tutorial here on like learning how to actually control your sword and your down attacks and then your sideways attacks for left, right, and then your stab attacks, which uh, never really respond correctly and they don't really respond that well with the, the, the Joy-Con. And then, yeah, that's right, Austin J. I don't actually know if you have to do it in this game. And then you also learn about how to do a spin attack. Can I just, can I just leave? Oh, I can just leave. Okay, bye. So before all these quality of life improvements at the beginning of the game, the beginning of the game was, with no exaggeration, about 90 minutes. Like, including all this is you getting the tutorial on how to like move around and get a sword and everything else. 90 minutes, not that great. And uh, so far we're at what, like, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes of playing, so not bad at all. Anyways, we're now going to be heading to the opposite side of Skyloft, and like I said, there's going to be those stamina fruits along the way. Hop over these pebbles right here. By the way, adorable little bird statue. Wonder if it's going to be helpful later. Foreshadowing. This is the waterfall, and inside of the waterfall. And this was previously locked before if you wanted to explore around, because you actually have to chop these down and you didn't have a sword before. Now you do. Oh my god, it's my burb. Somehow I psychologically, or psychically knew that he was going to be there. Anyways, we're going to chop all that down. We're going to head inside. There's going to be two different types of enemies we're going to find in here. One are keys. Those are the bats that hang from the ceiling. Which my recommendation is just hold down the ZL button for targeting. And then just swing your sword left and right. And that kills all them. GG. Ooh, make sure you get all rupees that fall. And then we have Choo Choo's. If you played Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, you're probably familiar with these two enemies. Except they are much more regular in this game. So now you're going to see a break in the fence. You want to hop down it and then hop down to this chest and collect it for an easy 20 rupees. Very nice. From here, we're going to hop down again, run up the pathway, and we're going to continue along this pretty linear tunnel. And you're going to see this small area of vines. We're going to climb up here. And inside of here, boom, another 20 rupees. At the beginning of the game, oh, we also got a heart. At the beginning of the game, you're gonna have a whole bunch of rupees that come in. Anytime that you need to know how many rupees that you can hold, highlight over your wallet and it will tell you. We can hold up to 300. I think in the original game, it was only 200 as soon as you start off. We're getting sidetracked. Let's hop up here and then ugh, more, more bats. Also, it's super annoying with the training sword because they take two hits each. Anyways, over here, you're gonna see this little bushel of grass and inside of here, we're gonna hop in and there's gonna be two red rupees that should put you at about 100, maybe close to 100, but definitely 80 rupees nonetheless. Hop outside, run down the side. Zelda's gonna interrupt you and she's gonna be like, hey, I found you and I heard where your bird is and it's the place where you are right now. Isn't that so crazy? It is. All you have to do is run down the path, and on the right, you're going to be seeing your burb after this adorable little cutscene. Look, there he is. All you have to do is cut these on the right angle properly. So we're gonna we're gonna just do a a, a right, a right, a diagonal, a diagon alley, another diagonal, and another horizontal, and our bird is free. Hooray! I'm gonna name him. Um, uh. He's a Crimson Loftwing. I want to start with a C. He's not much of a Charlie. Uh, mm. Caper. No, I hate capers. I don't know. I'll figure out a name later. From here, we get a little tutorial on how to call our burb, which is uh, D down, or left Joy-Con of the D-pad down, and we get to fly around. Now, if you want some, some pro strats on how to control your bird here, I recommend Oh, you probably need to see me for this. I probably recommend holding it like slightly downward. That way you're always facing down and makes you go faster. And then you want to face up and you can ride that up speed a little bit. Oh, this feels so much nicer than using the, the Wii, the Wii remote. And then if you really want to gain some speed, you want to tilt it down a lot and then you start to do that whoosh. And when you do that, you get a little bit of up speed. Not too much though. And then in this game, anytime that you need help, you just hit the D right button 
and that tells you how to control yourself and whatever you're doing at the time. And a button to slow down. I don't think I've ever hit the slow down button. To that, on my knowledge, the charge never actually makes you go faster. Instead, you actually maintain your current speed once you're done with it. Like, some people think it makes you go faster. I don't think it does. From here, the game is going to be putting you into the wing ceremony, where you need to go against Groose and the other two, who are extremely forgettable names, and you need to actually get a little, little obelisk from them. This is basically the game saying, you need to learn to control the, gir the, the bird good enough to progress in the game. As soon as he says go, you just want to dash and jump off and call your bird. It actually doesn't matter how fast you do it, you always start this... I guess it's kind of like a mini game. You always start behind them. But if you just keep your Joy-Con face down a little bit, except for when you want to do these updrafts, it's going to be super easy for you to gain some distance here. Try to avoid hitting the other racers. And when you're close, you just need to hit the A button. I was hoping I was able to do it just then. That way it would have been so smooth. You're going to hear that loud sound when you have to grab it. And then, as soon as you're close enough to hit the A button and catch it, Groose is going to be like, oh, hey, this is my day to hang out with Zelda and, and totally, totally snog her or whatever, whatever you want to say. I don't know specifically. They're going to throw eggs at you. Uh, <laughs> and specifically why they're allowed to compete in this race or competition after it's very well known knowledge that they just try to, you know, sabotage and lock up your bird. I'm not really too sure. Seems like kind of bad sportsmanship, and uh, the headmaster shouldn't be like, Hey, you know what? This guy would make a really prestigious knight. We should allow him to compete. Anyways, just catch the bird again. I recommend as soon as you're near that loft wing, just keep spamming the A button, and eventually you'll get it. Yeah, you got it. After that, we're going to take a nappy poo. We have the super weird dream, and then when we head out into the hallway, we have to follow this creepy blue figure. Welcome to your assistant who was much more annoying in the original game. Her name is either Fee or Fi, and I've heard it being pronounced both ways, and I'm not here to say that one is right and one is wrong. Even though I know that I want to say Fi, like uh, Wi-Fi or fee fi fo fum or something like that, sometimes I'll just call her Fee, and I don't know why. Also, I hate this fruit right here because anytime I try to grab this fruit, I'm usually still running and it just automatically makes you jump forward and over the cliff. And there's no invisible wall there or anything. You thought they could have put a visible wall in the remake? Nope, that's fine. Thanks, Kite. He's wearing a green tunic. That looks so cool on you. Okay, bye guy. From here, you have to do sort of a little obstacle course that uh, Fee is gonna deem you worthy or whatever you wanna say about it. And look, it's the, it's the headmaster's cat. And guess what? The cats at nighttime are evil. Well, they're like cat tanuki giant rat things. So just hit it with your sword in its face. You're just petting it. Just petting it. Just petting it. You can't actually ever defeat it, so you just want to hit it and continue along your way. Uh, I know that there's a rupee down here, and I kind of want to get that. And then we have to climb all the way back up. From here, we're just going to slowly make our way over. You can feel free to leap to the right, unlike Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, you're gonna have plenty of stamina to leap to the right if you want to. It's not like, you know, you're sacrificing extra stamina for extra speed, and if you do it too much, then you're going to lose. Instead, it's just like, you could do it. In fact, I'm not even really too sure why it's a feature and why they didn't just make you move faster. When running at cliffs, if you keep down the sprint button held up, you climb them significantly faster, so definitely recommend always doing that. From here, you're just going to follow Fi along, and inside of the statue of the goddess, you're going to be seeing its sword in the middle of the room. What is it? Is it the Master Sword? Nope, it's not. The Master Sword doesn't exist. If you're not too familiar, this is actually the very beginning of like the Legend of Zelda timeline, and essentially what you're doing is you're establishing the Master Sword, you're establishing the Triforce being passed along to Link and Zelda, and a whole bunch of lore for the entire series. Which is funny, because if this is your second or maybe third Zelda game, Breath of the Wild being your first, and maybe you picked up Link's Awakening, then you're gonna be very confused, because <laughs> there wasn't a lot of, you know, Zelda lore in Breath of the Wild, except for, you know, uh, all the tribes that died thousands of years ago. Anyways, Fee is gonna be like, hey, I was sent by the goddess, and I'm gonna have these strange dreams, and under the circumstances, only logical, they do exhibit some apprehension, so you don't know what's going on here, buddy. So now you get to do your first little fun, unique motion thing. Ready stance, 
Joy-Con, what is this, upside down, and then I'm gonna hold the A button, and then I'm gonna remove it. There we go. Yeah. Oh, and then we have to hold it to the sky. Nice. That's also how we do a goddess strike. And uh, it used to be very temperamental in the previous, in the, the original, the original version. Now that we just learned how to do a goddess strike, now we're gonna do a goddess strike on this crest over here. And you're gonna notice that it looks a lot like the Hylian crest just without the Triforce. Maybe because we're in the sky and it's sort of like a, a, a sky crest and eh, you'll find out later. Now we're gonna take a, our big old tablet and we're gonna put our tablet on this big old map and the goddess is gonna shoot out a big old beam into the clouds. Whoa, look at that, it's so crazy. This game is more or less you going from the sky to the surface and no one's ever been able to go to the surface before. But now you can go to the surface because the cloud barrier has separated because the goddess did it. Thanks, goddess. The next morning, Link wakes up. He's in a brand new fresh green tunic. It looks super dope. And it's funny to know that Link's traditional green outfit is just because they were night, they were patrolmen on a watch to make sure people don't fly off of a floating island. That's, that's kind of it. Kind of it. Well, fantastic. Welcome to actually being able to play the game. And like I said, the original tutorial would have lasted much longer. Ah, oh, Fledge, what do you want? Oh, that's right. Fledge is going to give us our adventure tool belt, the adventure pouch. You're going to start with four positions and you're going to be able to access that with R. And we're going to spend a lot of the game expanding our adventure pouch and filling it up with things. Don't talk to him. I mean, you can. I just don't like him. All right. First things first, we need to get some stuff. And we're gonna talk to the headmaster over here, Olin, and he's gonna be like, hey, you want a shield? Take it. Fun fact, if you don't speak to him now and you speak to him later in the game, instead of a shield, he just gives you 20 rupees. And now, if you hold down the R button, you can go between the items in your adventure pouch, including the wooden shield that you could equip quickly by tapping the R button. And uh, there's gonna be some points that you don't wanna have the shield out. I mean, for me at least, just because of how I think it looks at the top left. But we're not done. Instead, we want to head inside of the bazaar. We do not want to head down to the clouds immediately. Here in the bazaar, let me break down some things. One, this is a stool. <laughs> you sit on it and you recover hearts. I know that sounds really boring and really lame, but it's a good mechanic to know. That way you don't ever have to, you know, run around chopping grass for hearts. This is a guy who's going to be able to upgrade all of our equipment for us. His name is Gondo. You can also fix your shield at a very, very low fee, and I definitely recommend you doing that if your shield is ever uh, worse for wear. And you're going to see that we need Amber Relics, Monster Claws, and Jelly Blobs. You don't have Amber Relics yet. You may have gotten Monster Claws and Jelly Blobs as very, very rare drops. This one from Keese and this one from the Choo Choo's. The Amber Relics are only found on the ground and in some chests all throughout uh, the surface. We will be upgrading it shortly, so don't worry about it. Here is a lady who is going to check all of our items. Now, she has sort of a hidden affection level, and every time that you're near the area, you should at least speak with her, even if you don't need to actually store anything. Back here, you're going to be finding what's called a goddess chest. These correspond to special cubes on the surface, and there's going to be a whole bunch of them. This guy is the one who sells you all the items, including bombs that you can't buy yet, and arrows that you can't buy yet, and seeds that you can't buy yet. Isn't that so neat? But we're gonna speak to this lady over here. She is in charge of the potions. Her name is Love? Is it Louvre? One of those. Anyway, she gives you an empty bottle. Now, I'm gonna recommend that you buy a red potion. It's your game. If you wanna do it, go for it. It's only 20 rubies. Can't hurt, right? Now that we have our heart potion and we have our shield, Oh, make sure to not accidentally tap the R button and then immediately drink your potion because that's definitely a thing that can happen. Instead, you have your wooden shield highlighted. You know what? Just keep the wooden shield out all the time. This is pretty much it to the bazaar. There's this guy, Sparrow, over here. Sparrow can actually tell you about treasure and your objectives on the surface. But, I mean, that's what you have me for, right? Right. Unfortunately, at this point, there's nothing else we can really do on the surface unless you're going to be playing in hero mode right now, which if you're playing in hero mode, there's a lot more that you can do. Uh, actually, not too much because Beetle's still up there and you still don't have a long range weapon, so I'd recommend just heading to the surface, which we are going to be doing in our next episode of Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword 100% walkthrough with me, Austin John Plays. 
If you found this helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. There's a playlist down below with the next episode, as well as a card on screen or an end screen or something. It should be somewhere. Well, anyways, thanks so much for checking out this video. Until next time, Austin John out.